Wait, there's something very weak coming through. A long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away. Hello, fellow galactic listeners. I'm Todd Hoffman, and this is WSTR, Galactic Public Access, a Star Wars podcast. Welcome to episode 144. Today, we're going to be talking about the UK influence on Star Wars with Dave and Phil from Ones with the Force, a Star Wars podcast. Welcome to the show, guys. Hello there. Good evening. Good evening. Oh, good morning. It's good all morning. sorts of messed up times. Yeah, it, good morning it, for us. It is half past two in the morning for us. It's a little, uh, a little late. It's okay. In Star Wars, time is irrelevant. You know, it could be parsecs. It could be whatever. You know, it doesn't matter. I got my coffee. It's all good. And that's good. That's good. That's awesome. Well, we, I can't wait to talk to you guys. Um, Heather and and Aaron are unfortunately have the night off, so it's just going to be us fine gentlemen. We, we can handle it. I think. I, I definitely think we can handle it. So. Um, okay, we got to pay some bills. Uh, living with the price on your head is not easy. You can find everyone except Aaron on social media. Uh, we are at WSTR Media, all one word, all lowercase. Email us at mailbox at WSTRmedia.com. Leave us a voicemail at 630-557-WSTR. That's 630-557-9787. Operators are standing by. You can leave us a voicemail, and we want to hear and blast that uh, gorgeous voice on the Internet. Uh, don't be shy. We, we, we'll we give you a sticker, too, so can't beat that. Um, also, back catalog of episodes can be found at podcast.wsgrmedia.com. Uh, we were brought to you by Audible. Audible is a free, easy, no-risk way to support our podcast. Uh, this is Amazon's Audible book service. There's over 425,000 titles to choose from. Uh, you can go to audibletrial.com forward slash WSTR uh, to get your free 30-day trial. It includes a free Audible book. Uh, two free Audible Originals, and you get to keep that free, even if you want to cancel at any time. Uh, again, every month Audible uh, does originals, so this this month in October, they're a little spooky, so, you know, because Halloween's coming up, so there you go. But yeah, you have over 425,000 titles to choose from that helps us support, support our podcast, and you get a free book, so there you go. So... Uh, once again, it's audibletrial.com floor slash WSTR. Gentlemen, do you guys do Audible books? I've done a, a couple. Uh, to be honest, Phil yeah. is much more of the, the Star Wars novel guy, so uh-huh. a lot of our time, Phil will be into that side of it. So I've done Audible a few times, actually. So to be honest, and well, I've used a few to get the free audiobooks uh, signing up. So it is a really great service for anyone out there who wants to get a hold of audiobooks. The titles that are available, especially Star Wars ones, are so vast. There, there's so there's so many. It is. And the last one I had off there was um, as the Jedi. So again, getting as much coming off there as I can as possible for free. Or right. Pay for it. <laughs> right. 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 That's awesome. Yeah. That, I think like for me too. Like I used to physically read, but now the uh, with uh, I got a new job, and so now I have to drive a lot more, and so Audible is like you know, just easier to like kind of consume that. Um, and it's fun. They're fun. I think they're fun. So I think anything where you can kill your commute with a bit of a, with a bit <laughs> yeah. of an audio book is always a right, good option. Right. Well, yeah, I see that exactly. all these things will find voices across our various platforms. That's right. That's right. Exactly. Right. You could do a little podcast in a little book. There you go. Yeah, exactly. you know? <laughs> awesome. So yeah, once again, you could try uh, a free Audible trial at audibletrial.com forward slash WSDR. We also got merch. You can check all our stuff out at store.wsdrmedia.com. All right, paid the bills. That's over. Okay, we're gonna tease that news. Um, here, here's a couple items for later in the show. It's bad. Okay. Um, the next one is missing person, off the handle, and finally, always in motion. The future is. All right, we are gonna move on to Twitter trash compactor. Get in there, you big boy! Oh, I don't care what you smell. Every week we we run through those polls, and this week is no exception. Um, this week we are we're talking about how was your Force Friday weekend experience? Comments, welcome, gentlemen. 
Did you guys participate in Force Friday? Force Friday here was not particularly great. Yes, I was listening to your pod. I was like, okay, it didn't sound too advantageous. Yeah, it's it's crazy that there's such a big difference in the terms of release from certainly in the US to yes. sometimes what we get in the UK. Uh, last year, uh, Phil and I, was it last year we met? Two Phil? years ago, 2017, Two years ago, yeah. Wow. For Force Friday in London, so we got together and we went to that one. It was great, went to a few different places, but to be it honest, was, this, this year... This at midnight, it was cracking. Yeah. Uh, this year, I couldn't actually felt like I couldn't actually participate anyway because it was uh, my old man's birthday. So, um, being 60th, I couldn't really get off scot free for yeah. that one, sadly. Um, Dad, I got to go shopping for Star Wars toys. I'm sorry. I'm out. Yeah, I would have gone for toys. Barely, surprise party. No, that's not going to happen, sadly. Right, right, right. But yeah, so it's kind of it's been where we're getting to a point where the releases just certainly aren't even getting to store a lot of the time for Force Friday. George, yeah. who is the third on our podcast, did go out and place like Forbidden Planet, which is a big sci-fi store here in the UK. I know there are yes, in I'm the US familiar. as well. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Um, yep. But they didn't even get their stock of the Black Series figures, and they only had about three of the pops that were available as well. So. Wow. It's really tough over here where we don't seem to get the, the merchandise as quickly as we'd like to have. And it's mm-hmm. we have to kind of rely on websites now. You're looking at your Star Toys yeah. and A1 Toys yeah. over here. And it seems really difficult that we have to kind of do that. It kind of takes the appeal away of Force Friday because you can't... Right. You have to give up on the chase of figures now. It's like yeah, it, not going to Toys yeah. at midnight we anymore. We also... Not only that, we then also lack a lot of the exclusives that you guys get. We get a, a couple, maybe. Like, for example, uh-huh. we have the caramelized... Um, the caramelized? caramelized? <laughs> well, that's what happens. It's caramelized, like, carbonized... It is early, I have said. A uh, carbonized <laughs> yeah. version of the Mandalorian. Right, so right. I really want a caramelized stuff. version. <laughs> well, carbonized, caramelized, it's some kind of eyes, you know, yeah. <laughs> suspended animation or suspended sugar, either way. Right, right, works. right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah it's just, like you said it kind of loses the appeal if you can't actually grab them yeah I, I get exactly it. Uh, you know yeah it's um it was a little even here it was a little lackluster too because of the same thing i, I think online shopping kind of takes a little bit out of it and a lot of our stores um weren't doing midnight you know yeah. and that's it just it kind of takes away yeah, from I mean- it and I live in the south of England in a very small uh-huh. town. London is okay. just over an hour away from me. I have to go there if I want anything big. Anything around me, even the big cities in my vicinity, don't do anything at all. It's just... Yeah. It's and we lost... Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm the other end of the country, so I'm up, in no, up, I'm up north in the UK uh-huh. here. So we are literally right, the opposite right. end of the country. But again, here we, had, we did have a huge Toys R Us. Unfortunately, the UK Toys R Us is no longer a thing at all. Yeah, yeah. I know, I it's, know. It's, it's gone. It's, May Jeffrey it's the gone. giraffe rest in peace. But yes, yeah. he is. Uh, so yeah, we lost that. And once that was gone, yeah, there's nowhere that did a midnight opening anywhere near I me I think it's also all. part of the problem. We lost a lot of toy stores over the years uh, yeah. through the crunch anyway. For, and England's yeah. never really kind of come back to the fore with that. Right. So we don't have right. many big stores for releases. Right, exactly, exactly. Well, our our poll was basically again. Twitter has four choices, so it's was it awesome, good, bad, or ugly. So I'm kind of hearing it was kind of bad for you guys. I voted on your poll. Yes, mine was one of the ugly votes. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Um, Twitter voted awesome so 50 percent got awesome so i mean it's not totally awesome if it's not just 50 percent. but um that that was everyone's experience there so good for those folks who got what <laughs> yeah, right, right, <laughs> right that doesn't help us you know? no, i mean i i tend to do a lot of my hunting at conventions for that kind of stuff it's yeah it's yeah as as exactly because it's it's like there it's you know yeah. it's like it, it's there but of course the problem with that is you know it, it, you have to pay a little more yeah. for that. So. Yeah, depending, yes. If you know what the original price is, you can kind of get it for what you can. It's and it's even harder when you cosplay as well. I, I have, I am wearing stuff, and this is even harder to carry. But I will get what I need. <laughs> right, right, exactly. Um, so yeah, there you go. That that's our Twitter poll for the week. Uh, we're always trying to, to uh, run a poll on Twitter, so check that out. Um, but yeah, so how about we go to our main topic and now for our feature presentation 
All right, gents, you're you're on the hot seat. So let's let's start off with an easy question. So I'm gonna start with Dave. How did you get into Star Wars? In the Star Wars, so I'm I was about to say I'm a child of the seventies, and I will use that when anybody asks. I was born okay. in February of seventy nine, so I'm okay. literally the very <laughs> end of the seventies. But you're I like will, a, just. Just on the cusp, I'm right there. Like, so yeah, no, yeah. yeah, no, child of the 80s. No, 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 child of the 70s right here. Not really. <laughs> Just about. I didn't know anything. So Star Wars was kind of out a couple of years before I came into being. And yep. So my first memories were Empire, were my real first memories of seeing something being advertised as Star Wars. And about 1982 here, they started showing Star Wars at, at Christmas time on one of our TV show stations that we had. So yep. that was a, a yearly event. And then from that, really, I was I was hooked. I got given my first Star Wars action figure by my parents. It was a uh, Tie Fighter pilot. There we go. My <laughs> yeah. word, that went. And it, it was it was swimming. It, it was really swimming. was. It was there. So I was like, what figure? What? Yeah, that was a childhood memory gone. Uh, but right. yes, yeah, so I got a Tie Fighter pilot, and I've been hooked ever since. Um, yeah, Jedi yeah. was probably one of the first ones I saw in the theater as as an actual child, as a youngster. And then, obviously, it, from that, it's always grown. It's never really gone away. It yeah. probably left a little bit after we went into that Star Wars doldrum where there was nothing mm. after Jedi. Yep. Yeah. I lived through lived through those times, and that was tough mm-hmm. to kind of... And then, probably not until... I mean, I saw the special editions, but not probably until Clone Wars came back, when okay. my fandom okay. really started to pick back up again. Okay. And then yeah. we are where we are today, and we'll get to that story, I'm sure, shortly. Yeah, of course, of course. All right, Phil, you're up. Indeed, so it's How interesting. Get- so uh, Dave's at one end of the spectrum. He was around during the original run, towards the end of it, of course, but it, it is that tail end. But especially for Jedi being 83, it's that kind of yeah. uh, era. Um, I'm in the middle. Um, I'll just quickly talk about George for a second, our third in our podcast. He never saw the originals in the cinema. His first was Phantom Menace. For me, okay. I was born in 91. So by mm-hmm. the time that... Um, the special editions came out in 97 I was 6 yes. my dad went well I kind of want to go and see them I don't like, oh, no, I'll take Phil he'll enjoy them that's what his excuse <laughs> right. was to my mum right. to go and see them was I'll take Phil he'll enjoy it um, little did he know what an impact that would have on my life going forward and we'll talk about that more uh, later on I guess right. but um, right. it was that moment being in the in the cinema at 6 years old seeing the opening to episode four and having that Star Destroyer go over the top of my head and that big screen. It was just that moment for me is to find so much, go for that one impactful moment. Um, so of course I then saw Empire and Jedi, um, got my first Star Wars toys for Christmas on my following birthday. Yeah. Everything was kind of set into stone there. And I had two years, of course, before Phantom Menace came out. So I had that little gap between, okay, well, there's only three Star Wars films. This is all that there is. But then the hype was building up for episode one. So I had that very unique moment for me of having having the original three, but okay. knowing there was more on the horizon, but having a little gap not knowing. So it was like kind of the yeah. um, that last of the generation that only had the original trilogy. Right, right, yeah. Yeah, you didn't have to wait too long. No, I didn't have to wait too long, but... Yeah, two, wait, two years, you're like, but yeah. But it's yeah. long enough to have an impact for me to go, well, this is, what I, this is what I was brought up on, then compare it to what one, two, and three were as I was growing up even further. Yeah. And then I remember great. at university, I had to actually defend the prequels to my lecturer. I was getting ridiculed by my lecturer for liking the prequels as Disney was buying um, oh. Lucasfilm. So then yes, we go yeah, forward yeah. the sequels. Like, I was defending my love for Star Wars in my lecture theatre for <laughs> 1, 2, and 3. But there, was, there were some epic moments that I had to literally stand up and defend them in front of my entire <laughs> class. And then, you're not going to stop me talking about this. And, well, <laughs> right. now at least I have a medium for talking about it, get it out. No, that's right, that's right. Weeks. That's right, yeah. Awesome, awesome. So, yeah, so you guys mentioned that you're kind of on the opposite side of the UK. So why? how do you guys get into podcasting then how did how did that all work well out? it's george's fault really but what happened okay. was um we all met at star wars celebration in london 2016 okay 2016 2016 okay. so going back three years we all met at celebration and what happened was uh the very first night and they i don't know okay. he's already remember exactly what happened so <laughs> in the queue they what the um there's some people who didn't realize you had to queue overnight to get your wristbands for the uh, yeah. um the panels the following day of course we, yep. i was well prepared for this i had everything in my bag also stuff all ready to go <laughs> went and picked up my, right. my pass and everything on 
they were standing right behind me. I didn't, of course, know David at this point. And I had some Germans in front of me who were kind of very concerned. No, you, you pick them at 8 o'clock. Tonight, it's what it says here. It's like, no, 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 no. The gates open at 8. You pick them up the following morning. And it's explained, right. of course, then Dave chimed in. And then, well, we kind of we're sat next to each other in the queue. And, of course, well, what do you do when you're excited going to celebration yeah. the next day? We right, 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 exactly. We had, lo- we had Daniel Logan deliver us pizza. It was it was a, a great <laughs> night. We <laughs> did. And that's that's awesome. self- I actually got a selfie on my phone. I think it's on our, our page as well. Yeah. And, then, of course, from there, Dave and I got chatting. We were right. in the Rogue yeah. One panel the next day. Again, amazing okay. panel to see. And, yeah. of course, the night after, we arranged to meet up. I went back to some friends, went back, had a shower, went to the next right, day. Yeah. So right. on the Sunday night, so Saturday into the Sunday, uh, Dave and I had already arranged to meet up and hang out, basically, and um, sit in the queue overnight. So at least we have something, you know, someone we know just to talk to. Right. We ended up sitting behind George and his mates, and it turns out they had a channel called Cinema Savvy, which okay. um, this is just a cinema in general uh, podcast they did. Sure, sure, sure. George was is the bigger fan of Star Wars out of all of them. Of course, we were chatting. Okay. And there's a great moment. There's us playing Top Trumps. There's a photo on our Facebook page. If you go back to episode seven when they had that table read photo, that black and white photo of them sat around reading the script. Yeah. There's a photo yes. of Dave, myself, and George playing Star Wars Top Trumps at Celebration in 2016 in that queue where we all met. That's so, amazing. And then I'm in the south of England. George is in the middle, in the Midlands. Right. And Dave's right. right up north, right at the top. We gotcha. are there celebration, but now we've been talking online for the past three years. So when we we actually got a lovely little special later in the year, which we're doing for the Rise of Skywalker, we're all going to meet uh-huh. up. It'll be the first time the three of us have been in the same room since Celebration Twenty. Celebration, since yeah, yeah, yeah. Holy Phil cow. I, yeah. Phil and I have met up, but yeah, we've never. I've never seen yeah. George in the no, flesh. I've, I've I've seen George a few times. I've seen Dave uh, once, but <laughs> never all three of us. So it's been the that first time. That is amazing. Years. Yeah, that's amazing. I mean, that's such a cool Star Wars thing because it's like, yeah, we we just love Star Wars and we haven't really met, you know. So it's, it's that's that awesome. Point where you realize you were talking for nine hours straight and didn't get bored. You know, <laughs> right. This is someone on my level. I could get down with this. Right, right, exactly. So you're like, yeah, you're cool, you know. You and then know. of course our first experience as uh, Dave, you remember, was uh, the trailer for season two of Rebels when they released the okay. second. Uh, trailer for it, season three, sorry, second trailer for it. And we were like, yeah, we'd already been a guest star on the channel anyway for their Bash of the Brackets, which was a thing they ran. And we were like, I was like, well, shall okay. we just jump on and do a little breakdown of the trailer as yeah. a suggestion? And then we we're like, yes, oh, it's got like a thousand odd views or something. We we're like, this is kind of cool, shall we? Cool, like, yeah, just to make this a regular thing. And then 63 episodes and a bunch of specials <laughs> later, here we are. Here you are. That's right. That's right. Exactly. It is wow. crazy that, yeah, from three guys meeting randomly in a queue at Star Wars Celebration yeah. to then have yeah. a podcast <laughs> yeah. three years and, down and, the line where we still right. have Star Wars to talk about every couple of weeks. Yeah. It, it's kind of crazy, isn't it? It's like, wait, are, can we do this every week? Or, you know, yeah, it kind of could work out, you know, so it's awesome. Been, it's been an amazing, yeah. amazing journey into this, which was something, certainly it's uh, my age of 30 I was what thirty seven <laughs> at the time, yeah. Sorry. Right, yeah, yeah. To, yeah, to get okay. to my forties, you know that point where you think, you know what, I've got all the friends I'm probably gonna meet right now. To yeah, then yeah. Meet and two guys, I mean, look, let's not say that they are younger than myself. I mean, George is half my age, basically. Right, right, so, right. So you know, right. It, it's 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 a really nice dynamic between the three of us because of yes. the difference in age ranges. I find yeah. it, our floor yeah. really works quite well. We have different yes. opinions as well, which yes. also helps as well. It's like yes, we, yeah, exactly. We did exactly. a video um, for we done a new series, which is our list videos. We did one a couple of weeks ago, and I found it fascinating because it was our top ten games, and you could tell okay. the generations by the games we chose, right. like consoles yeah. we played them on, the yeah. arcades for Dave, like yeah. N sixty fours for me, and then George and the PlayStation right. generation. <laughs> right. You can actually you can see the age gap in between, but it's yep. great because we all converge in a love of Star Wars, but we have yes. our individualism in between that, our own opinions, as yes. they said, and it's just been yes, exactly. it's a good dynamic. I, I, I think I think that's, uh, for me too, that's the most fascinating thing, is like, what's your entry point? Mm-hmm. And like, um, one of the things, especially like even a gaming thing, like people that grew up on like Lego Star Wars, and that's their entry point, point. you're like, 
that's pretty amazing. You know, like that's how they got invested into, you know, like some of the younger people got invested yeah. into the original trilogy because uh, that was Lego Star Wars. So it's like, okay, that's cool. And, you know, obviously um, I'm, I'm older as well. So uh, <laughs> yes, I, I was brother, born. Yes. I, I'm the youngest one I, for once. It's, uh, yeah, it's yeah, yeah. I, I was born in 77. So oh, nice. 75, I'm sorry. I was born in 75, so <laughs> I, I didn't get I didn't get uh, a new hope, but Empire really yeah. resonated with me. So, um, so I'm with you uh, there, um, and just like, you know, being a little bit more senior, it's still I, I'm so fascinated with like people that are getting into Rebels or you know even like Resistance now. Like even though some of that stuff is not really for me, I totally get like mm. it's still Although Star Wars. The interesting still, point yeah. in Resistance is Dave and I like it. George doesn't. And he's the younger one. <laughs> yeah. all, we all love Rebels. George right, does yeah. not like Resistance. But they like, no. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Very cool. Well, you know, since we're talking to two fine gentlemen from the UK, uh, it's very interesting. I thought we could take some time to kind of break down that, you know, Star Wars is an American movie, but it has some serious English ties. So, um, Really, the first thing is the location. Mm. So, you know, um, as many people know, if you're not familiar, uh, the original Star Wars, A New Hope, was filmed in Pinewood Studios. And the reason that it's filmed in Pinewood Studios is because oh, Pinewood is, yeah it's, <laughs> yeah, it's huge. It's like one of the, it is the biggest soundstage in the world. So, um Based on what George needed to do, this Pinewood Studios was the best spot to do, you know, the special effects and everything he needed to do was from Pinewood. So that's kind of how that little bit started, you know. Um, have you guys been by Pinewood? Know about Pinewood? Like, what, what, where's that at in England? Uh, it's just outside the M25 near London. So, okay. Uh, I know it. I'll leave it at that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I've never seen it, but that's fine. Uh, I know where that's it is fine. and that's okay. It's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I think it's crazy that you're right. This massive global American movie that was mostly filmed over here in Britain. But I think at the time you're right. The studio size helped. The tax yes. incentives probably were pretty good to come over right, here to the UK right. and to, yeah. to film. But at that point as well, I think some of the bigger movies were getting filmed in the UK. And I think yes. a lot of it came down as well. The crafts people that we have and the builders who they knew they could put these in the hands, especially oh, when you build this the ship, this brand new yes. ship that no one's seen, a millennium yes. or something. Yes, <laughs> yeah. Right. Build this to scale and right. then know that they were going to have the artistry and the expertise to get that done. At that yes. time, yes, a lot of films did come to the UK for that. Right, exactly. It, you're right. They they are you know very very talented people that were all in the UK, and that's that's where you had to go. Um, you weren't getting the the amount of things that they needed to build in Hollywood. You just couldn't do it. it you know, or you would have to really chunk it up, and it just wouldn't work. So you could build these large sets and. Um, uh, you know, again, to George's credit, too, the practical use of the sets, like um, one of the things is right at the beginning, like uh, the blockade runner with the hallway, they just filmed it in different angles and it looks like a huge ship, but it's really just one hallway and they change a couple things yeah, around. They and one, it, wall, one wall here, one wall here, put a door here, yeah. you're done. It's a new yeah, you're fine. done. And yeah. but it, to us, it's like, oh, that's another hallway, and yeah. these guys are going this way, and that's another. No, it's literally just one hallway that they filmed. And so, George was smart. I mean, in those, you know, in, in that sense. And then other thing too, I think that is big, and why they shot there is because of the costumes too. You know, like there were some. I mean, obviously, Star Wars is known for their costumes, and A New Hope is no exception. But some of the stuff they had to kind of borrow from the uh you know the studios and they just go and say hey we're gonna do this and well you know, famously we're gonna use um boss's outfit is actually one yes. from doctor who it's yes fantastic. exactly it's it's like this guy's an astronaut in doctor <laughs> who <laughs> yep. and then in uh empire strikes back he's a trend tershendon you know that's a lizard man and now he looks like this you it, know it works it's fine 
It works. So basically, all the all the films, well, the original trilogy, were all shot at Pinewood, and then um, I think they moved in for the prequels. It was Shepparton for episode one, and then it was Australia for two and three. Two and three, yes, yeah, because you, exactly. you do notice as well. You get that accent change on pretty much everybody from episode one, episode two, and three. Like, oh, they moved somewhere different in the galaxy. It's, uh... <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, the, cl- the, right. the clones maybe a slight hint to that with uh, the Kiwi accent there. <laughs> right. Why do the clones sound Australian? You know, Kiwi. So, uh, that's a yeah. Don't anger them. That's a difference. Like saying oh. some American Canadians. That kind of. <laughs> I understand. Get, like, I'm, okay. <laughs> I I don't want Jangle Fat. I don't want you know. I don't want him coming to my no. house. So. Although Daniel yes, Logan yeah, exactly. when I met him was lovely. I will say that. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. Um, yeah. So you do mention that. So do you think? George in mind that the Imperials would be British. I think we we are classic yeah. bad guys. It really oh, so is. It doesn't matter whether villain, you look yeah. at Star Wars or whichever movie you're looking at. We tend to get right. a lot of bad guy roles. Yeah. And maybe it's the accent. I have no idea. It's Not mine the, or Phil's, certainly. But maybe it's, <laughs> it's the it's the enunciation, the pronunciation. It's the kind of the definition for the words that I think gives. Yeah, that kind of, it's yeah. the cadence of it that gives it. It's the, ca- the, right. Yeah. Yeah, it's like it's a. I mean, again, it's more formal. It's yeah. a little bit more formal. Where obviously, from an American perspective, it's a little bit looser than uh, the pure English language. Well, so you know? I, so, I met Guy Henry at uh, a convention last year because uh, okay. he plays Tarkin in um, Rogue One. So again, right, I was okay. talking to him about uh, how he got his accent down to at least get the voice correct. Okay. And of course, he was talking about using lines that Peter Cushing did, and kind of going back and rewatching them, kind of get trying to get that cadence uh, right. down. He was using, um, it's like we will deal with your rebel friends soon enough. And it was like <laughs> to get the R rolled perfectly, to get everything spot on. It yeah. was, Phil was does his. love that R roll as well. He really does. <laughs> uh, uh, yes, yeah. yes, I do. That's not the point. Um, <laughs> it's yeah, it's just getting that cadence down. It's getting that right. Action. I think it's yeah, Br- the yeah. British bad guy. Yeah, it, it's like almost like clipped, you know, it's like, it's very distinct. And like you said, mm-hmm. that, that cadence is, is very well done. And I, I mean, I can't see it any different now. I mean, or I can't hear it any different now. Like, I just feel like most Imperials are British, you know, or have that kind of accent, you know. Um, yeah, it is nice uh, that uh, JJ brought that back as well for The Force Awakens, that yes, once they were doing yeah, with so the First Order. The sequel trilogies. That came right back, and yeah. <laughs> all the First Order officers again to, were mostly Game of Thrones extras, but back. yes, it was a uh, full-on British again. Yeah, yeah, I mean... I think obviously why they went to Australia is because Fox was like, hey, we got this new studio. It's brand new and we want you to film Star Wars there. And they probably threw George a bunch of money and just said, oh, yeah, come on down here. And so it's, you know, again, it's brand new studio they want to do that yeah. but like so obviously we have a coming... lot of blue paint a lot of green paint come and use it. <laughs> <laughs> right you're not going to use any of the set it's more going to be virtual but we need you to film we here, have some you know, great so. flaws you'll really like them uh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but i think you know i think too with the newer films especially with you know you mentioned the sequel trilogy and even like rogue one and solo They've done an excellent job of casting to um, bring that back. You mm-hmm. know, bring that. Uh, With Rogue I, One, you kind of you had to because of where it's yes. set in the in the time that you really had to get the Brit the Brits for the the uh, Imperials. It had to be done. Yeah, exactly. I I forget the guy. One of the you know when they're at Scarif, the one thing that I was like, um, he said schedule like very. I, it's very distinct. I'm like, <laughs> we don't say that like that. It's like, <laughs> yeah. it's like things, I love yeah, that guy. Schedule, yeah. It's, yeah, 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 exactly. Um, but yeah, it's just I think they've done a really good job uh, from a casting perspective to bring bring that flavor back that mm-hmm. was in the original trilogy. And like you said, Rogue One is so close to New Hope. It it has to it has to have the same feel. It can't can't have Kiwi people or Australian people uh, doing the accents. You know, you need or even Americans. It's like you need to have that kind of British influence. Yeah, I mean, so. even uh, of course um, Ben Mendelsohn who plays Krennic has to do a British yeah. accent. 
he is Australian, but he has to do a British accent. But of course, the, the best thing about that film for us was the, oh, it's beautiful gift that we use constantly in our chat. <laughs> yeah, I, I use that one a lot as well. <laughs> it's, George uses it more than anyone in our chat. It's just, it's just constant. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, there, I mean, there's the other thing too, from a casting perspective, um, you know, it, it, I hate to say this, but like some of the cantina people, they, they don't have a lot of makeup going on there. No, most of them are from up north, I've heard, around me. <laughs> <it's>, uh... <laughs> I'm just going to agree with you on that one, Dave, and let, you, let the, uh, the British... Idiom sink in there. It's fine. <laughs> Literally, if there's a bar culture, if yeah, we we'll be in there. It's fine. Right. It's okay. Yeah. Honestly, it's yeah. Some... It's like you you look really comfortable by this bar, and <laughs> I I think that face we could do something with this face. Yeah. Why don't you come on over? Probably just the crew that went. You guys look very comfortable by a bar. Let's just kind of put you in there. Just point the camera at you, so you being behind it. That's all it is. Just, That's all it is. Guys, yeah, don't yeah, shave but, for a little bit. It'll be fine. We'll just, some, <laughs> on the lens, we'll just put a, it's fine. Vaseline on there, we'll yeah, blend right yeah. into space, people. There you go. There you go. <laughs> uh, what What do you think, uh, um, what are some of the other influences you see from your perspective that are bleeding into Star Wars that are from like kind of a, you know, UK British perspective. Some of the locations, the actual yeah. forest and kind of, I mean, for example, it in is Solo, Corellio shot in Southampton. Really Southampton way. is literally like 30 minutes down the road from me. I thought I'll be there tomorrow to catch a coach to go to London to watch the NFL, but that's again, different point. Um, <laughs> it's, it is the streets of Southampton. It is the, the dock. They actually, the building they were filming at's being knocked down soon, but it is that kind of, that, grungy kind of towns that are just not being well kept for it's again the forest right. it's the we, right. we have quite a varied terrain here it's kind of apart from a desert where they go to tunisia or they go to uh, jordan or things right like that, we have quite a, a, a wide range of locations to shoot at okay cool yeah you're like that's just down the street that's awesome that is <laughs> i think that's probably one of the main takes you get from it as well like it's, again in rogue one i don't think the scene was used very much but they used a, a tube station for yes yes that was yes um I'm trying to what was that was, was it victoria canary, I, I no, was canary wolf it was canary oh, wolf thank you okay cool because he's the same one for men in black uh for the men in black international league the one that came out this year okay okay so yeah that that's that was where they converted that train station overnight to a star wars thing yep. filmed a couple shots then and then back. by the morning by the morning morning commute didn't even know star wars was filmed yeah, yeah basically pretty much yeah and they didn't do much dressing i'm not gonna lie it looks very similar if you go there in real life it looks very similar they literally just had to board up a couple of things and it's there it's done it's <laughs> it just it's it, it suits it yeah, that's that's amazing. You're like, hey, weren't some stormtroopers and some shore troopers just running down this the other day? You know, no, 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 I don't know what you're talking no, about. No, just, no. Just, just fire the water. <laughs> yeah, it's like move along, move along. Nothing, Nothing to see here. here. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, <laughs> uh, that's awesome. But that's well, the other thing, actually. Sorry, talking about the British accent, it's the stormtroopers yeah. as well. It's that very specific accent they have. That you can't quite place yeah. it, but you can't quite place it for a reason. There is no regionality to it. I think. The British accent lends itself more to being untraceable than, let's say, a more harsh American accent. Sometimes of, yeah, it's just that regional place. You, if it's a Queen's English, which is my accent, which is the Southern accent, okay. Someone that's okay. That feels like you're mocking me. To be totally honest, Phil, but that's fine. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's fine. More it's the, fine. the actual generalization accent, yeah. you're not going to be able to trace it. It's just very kind of bland. I think that mm -hmm. helps with the stormtroopers being able to not be able to trace them from any specific location you find them again on desert planets and tropical beaches you find them everywhere it's supposed to be that every man kind of just gotcha gotcha brought in from everywhere interesting yeah well i mean i think same thing in the states you know we you know east coast west coast you know southern i mean we all have that different accent obviously i'm from chicago so i have a midwestern accent so you know like like you said but as somebody that lives in that area you kind of pick that up more than somebody that doesn't yeah. so it's it's very similar like oh you talk normal but but everyone has their own little cadence mm. and little you know brings all that kind of into uh their speech so, but I, again i i think for star wars being such an american movie there's so many 
British influences, it's 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 uncanny that it it we get to share it in a sense. Absolutely, you know? and and it's yeah. still ongoing. I say with the Rise of Skywalker now coming out, this original this sequel trilogy has been exactly that. It's been that return yeah. to the studio system of almost a like studio system of all when they were doing Star Wars, mm. and yeah, it's been it's been a really welcome return for myself. Okay. Don't get me wrong, I'm I'm a big fan of the prequel trilogy. I worked in the cinema when it, or theater when it came out, but uh-huh. this you can say cinema. It's cinema fine. theater. Don't, that, yeah, you know, don't, sorry, uh, just uh, don't my curtail Britishness. your speech to uh, us. Man. No, I, I really didn't. I do. That was awful of me. Sorry. Uh, yes. So yeah, I'll just I'll dumb my words down. Stupid. Uh, You're betraying so, anyway. your roots already, Dave. I know. I really am. <laughs> it's terrible. But no, I, I think it's been a really welcome return in this trilogy and. I can't wait to see how that plays out. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's it's already in the books. It's already done. It's just being done in post now. It's it, you know, it, it's almost done. Just wait so. for Monday Night Football to get the next trailer. Right, that's right, right. We're gonna talk about so, that later, ex- yeah. Uh, yeah, we are, we are, exactly. Um, is is there anything else that you could think of that you see from your perspective, like, oh, that's such uh, you know, UK thing, you know, this is such a England thing. What, what could you do? You got anything else, guys? It's probably not like you. I think once you get into the films themselves, yes, that a lot of that does. While you see, like Phil said, like you see the locations, you see bits and pieces that yeah. are very like, oh, that's quintessentially British. I think right. once they're inside of that movie script, that a lot of that then kind of blends away. So sure, once they sure. once they take up that mantle of their their character, I think a lot of you will see that that disappear a bit. But I, again, yeah. I think it is just sort of you hear an accent, or you hear, like you said, a word, you'll hear the way it's said. And you go, oh, okay, I yeah. kind of know where you're from more than I did <laughs> yeah. before. Right. And I can place yeah. that. So yeah, I think it's more that, but a lot of it does sort of vanish into into the screenplay. Yeah. yeah. You yeah. should make sure it doesn't stick out. For example, if you had a Bristolian accent, that it would pull you right out of the film, I guarantee. Mm. So if you've ever yeah. seen Hot Fuzz, that's the accent yes. I'm talking about. That's yes. the accent I'm talking about, the farmer accent. Yes. That is, yeah. yeah, that'll pull you right out of it. <laughs> right, that's too much. It's too It's too much, right? Yeah, yeah and I have a hint to yeah. that because where I live, but it's not anywhere near as bad as it could be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, I mean, do you think, you know, because again, like with Daisy Ridley and John Boyega, like John Boyega had to ditch his. Do you think it was just because his he was... His very London accent, South London ah. accent. It's a thick accent. Yes. Um, yeah. Daisy's is it's still a London accent, but it's not as harsh. John's is uh-huh. much. John Boyega's is definitely much more of a South London. And it's just yeah. It was a South London. It's a proper. <laughs> it's, I, I'm gonna try and give you an example. I'm not very good at. Okay. London. Yeah. So again, yeah. Could could you help our listeners? Like, oh, can you give us a word. little little here? Again, that's it. It's, it's South London, mate. It's that down. <laughs> it's dumbing it down to that level. It's. I, uh-huh. I find it hard because I'm, I'm from the. More of the west, towards the west country than anything else, but I'm not that far uh-huh. out of London. So again, that's why my right. mind's more of a middle ground. But um, no, Daisy Ridley is more. It's similar to mine in a way of it's still a London accent, so it's still got a little bit of a harsh edge to it. But yeah. John Boyega has to ditch his because his is so thick. I actually yes. saw an interview with John Boyega. Not I think I saw it this week where he was talking about that, and he said he did try it with his accent, but it uh-huh. just did not work for what yeah. they were doing. So yeah. that's when he switched to the American accent. And the only thing with his American accent is it stands out a mile as not being a real American accent. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, but it stands out being better than his actual accent for the role. Oh, certainly for the role, absolutely. <laughs> right. But it's, uh, yes. when you hear it, it's yeah. like, yeah, that's that's not the best American accent in the world. But, hey. Right. Although, to be fair, yeah. though, if we're going to talk about British accents, we've got to talk about Anthony Daniels. He talks about enough about himself as is, but you've <laughs> yeah. got to talk about 3PO. Yeah, if you, you got to talk about three PO. Yes, the, the our oh English but, butler. Yeah, yes, exactly. Yeah. It's the, oh my, it's that emphasis on it as well. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's like, <laughs> like I see three PO human cyborg relations. It's a proper <laughs> British yes. butler. It has so if you're yeah, talking it, about accents, actually not talking about him kind of does him a disservice because he is that British butler that Lucas wanted. Right, it, it, you know, and again, they don't do too much with his voice. It's not, you know, it's no. pretty much him, and, and it's just a little. There might be a little electronic with it, but not too much. It's not synthesized as much as you would think. It's pretty much him, because yeah. like 
you know, when he's talking at celebration for 20 minutes, you, you know, it's, you know, it's like 20 it's minutes him, is, a, is a blessing. We saw him for an hour. That was <laughs> Although to be fair, though, as Dave will well attest, if you go back and watch Star Wars 20 uh, Celebration 2016 from London, you yes. will see me asking oh. Anthony Daniels a question, a certain question that made him and Warwick Davis absolutely Pissed themselves laughing. Sorry, my language. Uh, <laughs> they absolutely wet themselves laughing because it's just, it's a moment that uh, I, I turned to Dave with the question. I said, no, I uh-huh. can ask this in Dave's list. I went, yes, just, just, yes. just <laughs> do it. And, and what was the question? So I said, to, I, I said, so how did you keep yourself nice and shiny on set? Did you have someone to buff you? <laughs> <laughs> and it just tore them apart, and they would yeah, again. Thing is, goes well. Actually, kind of. If you watch, yes. If you watch a new hope back, you will see him when Luke gives him the rag. You can see him in the background cleaning a certain area. Very um. What is after his his oil bath? Go back Those oil watch baths it. are so good. Yeah, uh, they really are. <laughs> Thanks, the maker. Go back Thanks and watch it, and you'll never yeah. unsee it again. But you'll know why, and it's hilarious. <laughs> Because you have the two of them on stage, just just laughing, just not know what to say. It's like, yeah, perfect question. Just just have to ask it. I think the only thing with Anthony Daniels that I've found over the years, and we won't get into that rant right now, but is C three PO in the later movies seem to become more of an impression of the C three PO that he did originally. He seems very much when you watch the original trilogy back that he's just doing his voice, and that comes through yes. well. And I think as yes. he's got to know the character more and be that character uh-huh. more, he then plays it a slightly different way, the way he sure, uses sure. the words yeah. a little. And I just found yeah. that certainly in the prequel, towards the end of the prequel trilogy, he hasn't had much to do, obviously, in the sequel trilogy until, right. from what we've seen, he's going to be quite a big part of the, the final <laughs> right. movie. Red eyes. Right, yeah. Um, Rambo, but yeah, I do feel... With the, with the yeah, Rambo with his bowcaster. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so I do yeah, feel yeah. like he's been... Certainly, the later movies, it feels to me more like uh, Anthony Daniels doing an impression of the three PO that he created. Yeah, I, I actually would agree with you on that. I think it's a little bit, almost like, not a parody, but it's a little bit. It's it's a little overdone. Yes. It's, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, that's awesome. That's great. Yeah. I mean, again, it, it's it's American movie, but we share it together because it's like there's enough there where again. Uh, British and Imperials go hand, hand in hand. hand. We really has, do. Yeah, down the yeah, streets. Yeah. Together. Down the streets. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Um, it, yeah, and I, I think, I, I honestly, I can't see it any other way. You know, I yeah. just, I can't. It's just, and, and like we said earlier, I mean, with the newer films, they've brought well, it back. Of course, it's, even with uh, Rogue One, it was directed by Gareth Edwards, who is British. Yes, who's British? Yeah, right. He's like, I, I know these guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We all know each other. Uh, <laughs> right, that's right. <laughs> uh, the country's that's not awesome. that small. It's smaller than some states. Smaller than a lot <laughs> right, of states. Right. The majority, <laughs> but still, not that small. <laughs> right, exactly, exactly. But yeah, I, I mean, it just... Um, even like uh, Alec Guinness, too, I feel like, you know, he... It, it's it's shared. You know, there there's some... there's. There's difference though. I don't see, you know, even with his accent, I don't see him as an imperial. It's just weird, you know. Yeah. It's like just that a gentle accent. I think it came it came across that though, especially in seventy seven when they had that quality when you've got Cushing and you've yes. got that's Alec Guinness. Just yes. this quality of British acting as well was incredible. Princess yes. Leia to a to a point at the start of the movie even has sort of a British twang to her accent. <laughs> In a new world, right. it, it kind of disappears and fades out as the movie I, goes. But yeah, I I think I think too. She, I mean, Carrie Carrie's been on a uh, record kind of saying she mimicked. It was mm. he, she was like mimicking him in a sense and kind of like sticking it to him a little bit, you know. <laughs> so it does. It kind of goes in and out. Yeah. So when she's with Tarkin, she's totally oh yes, absolutely, kind yeah. of this. Yeah, yeah. But then uh, you know, as she's talking to the rebels, it. It loses that. It loses that clip. You know, it's not as thick as it is, especially when they first meet on the blockade runner. You're like, she's totally playing him. Yeah. Man. Oh, oh yeah. beautiful. Yeah. It's awesome. Well, guys, I mean, we still got a little bit more, so I really, I really appreciate that. But how about we move into news of the week? 
And now, the Star Wars News of the Week. All right. I, I can't tell you how much news is coming out. We are in the um, we're in the final countdown for this. Um, so this is coming from CNET.com, guys. Uh, the new Star Wars trilogy is worse than the prequels. So I, I don't know if this is clickbait. It probably is. Yeah. I clicked on it, so there you go. <laughs> so it worked, uh, damn it. Uh. It's, it's, it worked. But um I you know, I think I think again what we talked about too, just like your entry point. I'm not really going to go into this, but it's basically four less. The commentary is four less than Disney failed to learn from George Lucas at his worst. So um, I'm not really going to go totally into this, but I, I kind of want your opinion about the now the Disney, you know, Disney owned Star Wars. What, what's your guys thoughts? I'm going to start with Phil. What do you think? It's, it's a tough one for me. So I grew up. Yeah. Watching the prequels when I first came, as I yeah. said earlier in the show, um, I defended the prequels when I was at university to my lecturer. Right, and right. To stand up for my my love of them. Um, yeah. Watching the sequels, Rogue One is perfect in almost every aspect. It's a, it's an amazing film from <laughs> start is, to finish. It is a beautiful movie. It's a beautiful. But movie. it's a fairly risk free film because they know yeah. what the ending has to be. You can give it a beginning. The middle is cool. It's usually as you meet, but you know where it ends. You know yes. what the universe yeah. is. You, it's a very safe environment. Episode seven was the soft reboot in a way of the, that first sequel. But the characters themselves, I've said this on our show as well, the characters themselves identify the fact that they've done this before. Yep. They're going, yeah, we, we have done this. There are shields. We can take them down. It's like, we've done this. It's okay. It's just like Death Star again. We have done this. We know what to do. Even Jedi right. still has a second Death Star. Which people tend to yes. forget when they talk about episode seven. It's like they did this twice in the originals. So of course, they're going to do it a third right. time. Third time's a charm. Of course, this is, right, the, right, this, exactly. is, this is the biggest one. They still managed to do it. But the point is, well, that and they, then like and like uh, Han Solo calls it out. Yeah. So what? It's bigger. Yeah, exactly. They, they, that's my point, though. The characters ident- like, actually identify the fact that they've done this before. However, yeah. whilst they're doing, they're introducing new characters, new pla- new places, uh, and new themes that then go on to be explored in the Last Jedi. Now, I know the Last Jedi is a it's a split personality for some people. people some people love it. Sure, some sure. people hate it. Um, yeah. When it first came out, Dave was vehemently against it. And has come around okay. to love it. And he'll talk okay. about that for himself in a minute. For me, <laughs> I liked it coming out of it. I didn't love it coming out of it. I was very... Uh-huh. <clears throat> sorry, excuse me. I was very angry with how they treated Luke in that film. Luke oh. was my favorite character growing up. And I was... Okay. I, was, I thought they had ruined him before going back and rewatching it. Watching his flaws... It's flaws he has from four, five, and six that he didn't get trained as a youngling. It's again those flaws inbuilt. And when you yeah. get to the ending, he ends the film in the, the most Jedi way possible by going. So what are you going to do? Stand there with your lightsaber against everyone? It's like, well, yes, but in a way of he doesn't hurt anyone. No one dies. No That's one. Right. No one dies. He yeah. does it in the most pacifist way possible, whilst letting creating a distraction for everyone to escape, whilst he yep. himself talks to his nephew because i have failed you i i am sorry for that however yeah i will not let you do this but kind of taunts him in the way the only thing i was annoyed that they didn't have his green lightsaber because he's just seen that blue lightsaber be used but that's a yes yeah that, it ah. me, but that, <laughs> it's a small flaw i mean take right, out yeah. I mean, take out um oh take out the, the the stupid horse racing all the rest of it on canto oh, bite just take, bite. take out yeah. canto yeah. bite and it's a, yeah. it's a great film um, can't say just can't take it out a little bit, but yeah. I love the way it ends. The more I've watched it, yes. the more I love yeah. his pacifistic yeah. ending. It's the most Jedi way possible because he goes, "These are all the failings, but this is how I can at least correct some of it um, by my ending on my terms and correct, yep. try and correct the mistakes I've done." And I love it. Yep. I love the ending for that. So for me, going for one episode to nine, see what's coming out. Look forward to yep. that. Um, yes. Solo. Solo is a. Solo was the, again, a very... The issue with Solo is when it came out. We've talked about this again on our show. It came out yeah, far too soon. Yeah. It should have gone back a to a December bad release. Timing. Um Everyone's coming off The Last Jedi. There was not enough time to hype. The film flopped for some... I love the film. It's a very well-written film with... I mean, Ron Howard is an amazing director. We all know this. The first 10 minutes aren't that great and everything else is amazing from there. And I hate... I hate with a passion how he gets the name Solo. It just, it just 
grates on me. It's just the the worst thing they could have done to the character. <laughs> the rest of it, love it. Yeah, yeah. I love right, I love you... how they utilize Kira as well. I like yes. Darth Maul be at the end with Crimson Dawn for the comics and for yeah. the books and everything else to give them more meat to chew on. So there's, just, there's so much more they can add to it. So again, kind of safe environment at the same time though. Not safe with Solo. It's a character that people hold dear. Old Nerorike had a very big job to do. In fact, we were there at Celebration when you got introduced to the world as cool. Han and we were like, I've got a bad feeling about this, but <laughs> yeah. right. see where it goes. But yeah, that's that's my opinion on that one. Gotcha. Okay. I All right. yeah. I mean, I'm in a different place. Maybe that I think Star Wars, the Star Wars fan community, had always been this place of positivity yeah. and friendship. As yes, our, yeah. a lot of our podcasts and people listen to the shows, and we have a big yeah. podcast family on Twitter that we often talk to each other. And you know, we've got this amazing community of people who love this. Right. I hate the fashionable thing to now hate on star wars yeah it yeah. it came late in the game it seemed as phil said last jedi kind of seemed to prompt this more what well, yeah than anything I, but since the disney era i yeah. i people that i think it is you're right it is a very clickbaity title what it, why it's not worse than the prequels playing that <laughs> right. the, the prequels were bad to start with but you know what <laughs> right. they're not they're yeah. great movies too yeah. And these, to me, are special movies. I, I'm really enjoying now the, the trilogy. And Phil's right, I didn't enjoy last year the first time I came out. I think it yeah. was such a, a, it's a different. stark difference to what I thought it was going to be when I go and in. That's, I think that's, that's the problem. Everyone was going, episode seven is too familiar. It's too samey to what they've done. Last year is too different. Yeah. What do you want? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So just gonna watch, they want, just watch they New Hope again, yeah. yeah. So yeah, yeah. it's just been that case where I think, yeah, it's it, it seems more fashionable now to just put this in Star Wars and obviously these news articles now, the Rise of Skywalker's coming out, love to get these things out for people to get into their website to click on something yeah. to look over these things. And the points they bring up are often stupid. And I yeah, don't care. I, I'm sorry. I clicked, on, I clicked on it. I clicked on it. And now we're talking about it. I'm yeah. sorry. That's wow. okay. That's it's, absolutely yeah, fine. Yeah. I just don't, I just don't like how fashionable it is to, yeah. to dislike Star Wars. That's my main bugbear from that, that it's become that. I mean, I'll, yeah, I think I might talk about it later. Um, but anyway, I play X-Wing competitively. And in my, in my group chat for my team, there is a guy, we should all have our nicknames. His is not a real Star Wars fan because he likes a new hope. Likes Empire, and that's it. Doesn't even like Jedi. <laughs> he hates on everything else with a passion. It's to the point of we, I, I can't have conversations with him about it because it's the hate is just too much. And even now, I see it like meme communities, other pieces and pieces where they just hate on it. I mean, Kelly Marie Tran got the worst of it and it's completely yeah. undeserving. I mean, Rose isn't my yeah. favorite character by far. She's in fact one of my least favorite characters. Um, in fact, she, she is. Well, Phasma's my least favorite by a long margin. <laughs> I mean, I have had rant after rant about Phasma because it's just... Oh, I won't get into that it's right waste. now, but it's... It's a waste. Oh, don't yeah. even get me started because I will, I will be oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But the point is, she got yeah. the a very much undeserving brunt of this yeah. hate that came out of almost nowhere. I go, again, yeah. with Dame, I just can't stand that. Yeah, I, I think... I think this is human nature. We tend to forget things and then it like, it like repeats itself. You know, history has a tendency to do that. Um, and Star Wars has a tendency to do that. And I, I mean, I lived through the prequels and people hated the prequels. They wanted to crucify George, you know, and, and quite frankly, that's what kind of drove him to sell this. He's like, even if I make this thing, the, half the people are going to hate it. So I might as well give it to somebody that can handle it. And even through this, I, I, I mean, again, it, I think it's Last Jedi it was cool to hate it, you know. And um, but yeah, that was, think, that was the main contention. It was cool to hate it, and that it, just it was cool it to else. hate it. And, and I, you know, but you're seeing this thing, which which is weird. And we talked about this earlier. Is that all the prequel kids are coming out now and saying, no, 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 no. Prequels are cool. I grew up. Phantom Menace is my favorite movie or the one that everyone doesn't like, like Attack of Clones is like that. I love that movie. And that's OK. Like, it's OK. That's that's what they grew up on, you know. And so um, I think it's just interesting because there was so much hate on the prequels. And now you're seeing that again in the sequels. And, and I think at the same time, it's like, you know what? 
you gotta you gotta bond together on the things you love, not on the things you hate. And as cliche as Rose's little line is in The Last Jedi, um, I think I think it kind of works in a sense. It's very meta. It's just like, yeah. hey, you know, yeah. you, you gotta we gotta you know kind of work this out, guys. Yeah. You know, and try to figure this out. But yeah. All right. Well, we didn't even talk about the article, but that's okay because it was clickbait anyway. So, <laughs> I think uh, Scandal we were also talking it is completely clickbait. It really, yeah, yeah, exactly. it really is. Um, just uh, but the, yeah, but this is a nice little segue. We talked about this earlier in uh, Force Friday, but uh, this article comes from Verney Fair and it's like, where is Rose? Um, Let's see. Hold on. Where is Rose Star Wars fans? What what want Kelly Marie Trans Hero on more merch? And so this is a very interesting well, her article. Last Jedi merch is still shut on the shelves. That's the problem. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, but there's some there's some interesting things where like they're saying some prototypes. So in this article, I know this is not good podcasting, but in the article it's saying, okay, on the left is an image of a preview of some mark merch and then here's another one in the store and so in this example it's saying rebel you know on the t-shirt and it's a picture of rose and then the next teachers that's actually in the disney store just says rebel without rose on the picture you know on this t-shirt you're like oh okay that that's a good example um and then a couple of these with the group shots it's like they have rose in this kind of group shot and then Rose is taken out and the actual production or final product of the image that the, you know, the t-shirt is on. Um, and then most recently in Empire, the Empire magazine, they show the final art and Rose is missing from the picture. And then they had to go back in and change it and add Rose. What what do you guys think of this? We'll start with Dave. What do you, what do you think of this, Dave? The... We, I mean, Phil and I and George covered a whole episode talking about the Kelly Marie Tran side of The Last Jedi and how abhorrent it was with what went on, with what she had to, to go through and cancel, really, uh, her whole yeah feeds and things like that. And, you know, it's, it's a really tough one because, yes, there are there's always prototypes in these things that they put out and they, they just throw out merchandise. And you know what? F- the people who decide on what's going on the front of these shirts are not fans are not mm. people who are in with everything that's going on these are people in corporate right. offices who will sit and look at a number and like phil said with merchandise still being on the shelves of right. rows yeah that's sometimes yeah. people in high up offices who get paid way more than anybody else uh, down right. the chain will sit and go well we've got these numbers projected so what we're going to do is remove that face from that t-shirt and that t-shirt will sell more Right. And yes, yeah. there are this there is a massive group of fans who are all about Rose and I get that and a lot of that came from the abuse that Kelly Marie Tran took from The Last Jedi. And I yes. think it's a wonderful movement as well for that to happen. Yes. For there to be a hashtag where's Rose, I, I do I do love that that's <laughs> that's actually there. Right. But I think yeah, I I do think it comes down to it's not a fan making these decisions. If it was, she would probably still be on there. This is someone way above a fan in a big office somewhere making decisions on numbers alone. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. It's someone looking at a spreadsheet going, we still have stock that hasn't sold. Um, she's not going to sell well. Let's just push out what does sell. I mean, the Rebel one, yeah. I like purely because I, I, uh, I prefer them being called the Resistance, not Rebels, because that's a different era. And that's just me just kind yeah. of being really, really pernickety, I guess. Um, but, no, she should never have been left out of the, the key art. She should never have been left out of the group shot and things like that. That's that's just not fair on her. Um, it's history repeating itself with Ahmed Best. And Ahmed Best has mm. come out yeah. quite categorically recently with his one-man show and the rest of it, talking about his experiences and what happened. Of course, he's just been coming back onto the the, um, the convention circuit and all the rest of it to see the love that's there for uh, him. And yes. it's, it's history I don't want to repeat itself on this one. Yeah. Kelly Marie Tran is um, one of the loveliest people you ever meet. She is someone who doesn't deserve the hate she got. And the character, right. I look forward to seeing what happens with her in episode nine. I think she could be really interesting. It could be cool to see what happens. This is just a really unfortunate circumstance. So I'm looking at a spreadsheet that, again, yeah. says isn't a true fan or it's a fan in an extent. It's, it's, it's 
it's decisions by community, not uh, sorry, decisions by committee, not by community. Yeah, yeah. It's a lovely line, yep. Phil. I like it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Put a trademark in that bad boy. <laughs> <laughs> I, I might put it on, put it on a t-shirt. Yeah, right. <laughs> right, put that on, put that on a t-shirt. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it just is unfortunate. I, I mean, obviously, you have a distinct, you know, that it, it's like any other character. There's, there's characters out there. Ah, I want to see more of this, but unfortunately, because Rose is one of the primary, you know, or secondary, if you want, you know, right, not out of the main three, but still. She's a prominent role in this new trilogy, and you're not seeing um, you're not seeing a lot of merch, and and that you know again from a fan's perspective, it's like okay, yeah. what's going on here, you know? All right, uh, next up, I, I don't know if you guys heard this or saw it, oh, but oh, we've uh, seen it. <laughs> uh, it's pretty interesting. Uh, Freddie Prince Jr. unloads on. Angry Star Wars fans. Star Wars is for effing kids. And so uh, if you're not f- familiar with Freddie Brents Jr., he is the voice of Kanan on uh, Star Wars Rebels. And uh, yeah, he was on a podcast, All Things Comedy, and he kind of goes to town. I'm going to have Aaron play it right here. Aaron, play that thing. I did a Star Wars cartoon so even I get hate from Star Wars fans when I'm like, look, dog, you're just mad the franchise isn't aging with you. Right. right. But that ain't how it works. The first one was for f-ing kids. Right. The second three were for different f-ing kids. Mm-hmm. And this one is for kids. You just pissed off that Han Solo gave the f-ing Millennium Falcon to a girl. <laughs> yes. That's it. Because Luke Skywalker is Cinderella. Or Sleeping Beauty, yeah. okay? He can talk to things that don't speak English and understands what they're f-ing saying. <laughs> yeah. He gets a fairy godfather instead of a fairy godmother who teaches him how to be the best Jedi in the world in no time f-ing flat. And everybody, like, I know more about the Force than most people because Dave Filoni taught me and George Lucas taught him. And all these video games have f-ing people up on what the Force is. Like, Luke's skill doesn't dictate whether he wins or loses. Right. The Emperor doesn't dictate whether he wins or loses. The Force dictates who wins or loses based on balance. And here's the the... the the, the quick version on how to explain it to all these people who f-ing think they get to decide. In the first, f-ing, if you want to do this like time wise, Palpatine, you would say, and Yoda are the smartest too. Palpatine clearly smarter because Yoda was blind to the power of the dark side and the seduction of of Anakin. So let's talk about the seduction of Anakin f-ing Skywalker for a second. <laughs> if the Emperor is the smartest dude in the in the universe and knows that the Force dictates this, if he kills who he sees as a rival, Anakin, then he knows the Force is just going to f***ing correct that because the Emperor knows this. These are George Lucas's words, not mine, so f*** you if you disagree with me. <laughs> straight, straight up, this is information, not affirmation time. Straight up, man. So the Emperor knows that. So instead of killing Anakin, what does he do? He seduces Anakin to double the strength of the dark side. So then what does the Force do? Balance. It balances us. How? It gives us twins, mm-hmm. Luke and Leia, two and f-ing two balance. And if you look at the movie through just that simple perspective, you will not only know why every single bad guy loses and every single good guy loses, you'll know who's going to win and lose in the next f-ing movies. I can tell you, I just don't want to wreck it. People bitch about the dumbest shit like it's archetype characters. This is George Lucas's words. There is no Jack Bauer in Star Wars. That character doesn't exist. It's not Han Solo. Han Solo is a reluctant hero. Okay, he's a reluctant hero. That's the archetype. Darth Maul, where everybody wants to win, and he's everyone's favorite because he looks sick and he's great in the video games. Does look cool. Fuck you guys. He's <laughs> Sisyphus. He is born to fail. Learn your Greek mythology, like I don't know George f-ing Lucas did. He's cursed to roll a boulder up the hill, only to have it roll to the bottom again every single time yes. for eternity. Yes. That is Darth Maul's quest. Yes. He's in on the joke, you guys. He knows it. He's just cursed to live that life again not my opinion george lucas is so go f- yourself if you disagree you don't get to level up in the star wars world that's a f- video game there's no such thing as a gray jedi qui-gon even says i turn towards the light because it's there there's no gray there's no that's that's pretend fan fiction shit, which is cool but don't try to canonize it because it doesn't work and i'm never gonna buy it ever star wars is for f-ing kids sorry i'm yeah. sorry all right guys what do you what do you think about what freddie said here best rant 
ever. <laughs> it's it's a pretty good three minute clip, uh, right? See, I cosplay uh, Kanan at London Film Comic Con just gone. There's a great shot on Instagram of myself and George. George awesome. George is in his um, Lando Hawaiian shirt. I'm in full Kanan outfit. Dude, I was, nice. I was proud to do it then. This just makes me prouder to cosplay Kane. It is just the best. Because he nails the point about being for kids, but in such a way of... It's a very concise way of putting it of... The original's made for, for an age group. You just haven't aged along with it appropriately. Yes. You haven't yeah. recognised that and gone back to this is what it is aimed at. Rebels... Right. The first half of the season one of Rebels is very much for kids. It gets darker yes. and darker and darker as you get deeper into it. Resistance right. is taking the same path, but in a much shorter time frame because it got over oh, two seasons. And it got right. extremely dark, especially if you watch the end of season one. Spoiler alert for those who haven't seen it. Um, they talk about the program the First Order has for kidnapping children. And yeah, no big deal. It's, a, it's, a, it's dark. <laughs> so this, again, it's that level of he he just nails it in a very good way and I, I i love it for me it's just yeah best run ever yeah it's good it's real good it's nice that you... someone who's been in the star wars community as he has as an actual ca- character in, character in a show yeah. who is obviously no longer tied to disney and yes. you can very much tell that by this rant that he goes on Right. It's like he's he, been he's... holding that for a long time for someone just to <laughs> just to mention a word about is Star Wars for kids? <laughs> to yeah, mm, yeah, and right, it's for kids. Right, it's for um, kids. <laughs> and I love how he was talking all the way through that about it's not his point of view, it's George Lucas's. And he got right, it from Dave yeah. Filoni. And that's yeah. George Lucas taught Dave Filoni, so he knows what he's talking about. Yeah, and, yeah no, you, you, you could totally tell that Freddie has a mad respect for Dave Filoni. Oh, yeah. Oh, I think yeah. they all do. I think it's it. it yes. I mean, he's he's an yeah. absolute legend. We adore what he's done, and his input now into the Star Wars universe is yeah. far-reaching. Obviously, through the Mandalorian, whatever right. comes next, he's. Oh, I love the man and his hat. Yeah, but it's <laughs> it's just. I just. I love that he was able to go on this rant on a yep. podcast where it probably wasn't. It certainly wasn't what they're expecting to get. They must sure. be rubbing their hands together when that happened. <laughs> thinking, do you know how many views this viral. is going to pull for us? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it went viral. Yeah. I mean, again, it just, like you said, he's not, he's free from all that contractual thing. Yeah. And he can say what he wants. Yeah. That's his opinion. But again, what he kept on saying is like, no, this is what George told Dave. This is what Dave told me. And this is what we believe or what it really is going to be about. And uh, yeah, it's it's the best three minute clip ever. It so, is. Does so it there best you go. run ever. So I, it, I had to watch it a couple of days later because of um, just about my schedule. And yeah. I literally just I've seen it now. Best run ever. Done. That was <laughs> yeah. all I needed to be said on a conversation with this was best run ever. Done. Right, right, exactly. In fact, exactly. yeah, it's also his wife's been it as well, don't forget as well. Uh Sarah Michelle Geller, she played Seventh Sister, of course. So it's he has so many ties to the universe alongside being uh Kane. Of course, being a Jedi, you yes. get that whole again, go up the the grey Jedi. Don't insert something that isn't there. Don't try to canonize something that isn't canon. I got taught what's yeah. effing canon. This, which yeah. is the arguments and conversations I have with people I know. They go, one of my friends is a massive Corrin Horn fan. And go, he doesn't have the Force next week. And go, well, yeah, he's not canon, right. therefore he doesn't get it. Yes, and it's just like he doesn't get it. They yeah, argue exactly. Like, well, Star Laws and our show is my baby. That's what I talk about. Is the comics, the books, everything. I mean, I have every single sure, single sure. issue that's been released since 2015. Since the Marvel yeah. took over, I was like, cool. I own every single issue since then. So there's right. 400 plus single issues. I have yes. most of the books, audios, the lot. It's that's my yeah. thing. Because right. I love the canon. I love to go do a proper deep dive. So when he talks sure. about don't make something can isn't canon. Don't put your fan theories in. It's great. You want to do the fan stuff. It's great. You want to make your short films. It's great. But don't try yes. and put something in that yes. isn't intended to be there. I know what's in there. I was effing taught. It's the best right now. <laughs> just I just love it. Because going. I just yeah. sent this to my friend. Going. My point is defended by Caden. Done. Argument <laughs> right, done. Right, done. Done. Right, right. When when you start like somebody gets in a rant or something, you're just like, here, I'm just pull up this yeah. video right here. There you go. Oh, it is bookmarked specifically for <laughs> yeah. that to be to go, you know what? Argument over. Done. You want to argue with right. argue with Kanan. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. All right, finally, gentlemen, we are uh this is the this is the title. John Boyega's Agent Leaks Potential Episode 9 trailer release date. So we got John Boyega's agent saying, hey, it's going to be on the 14th. 
everyone's drop it in dimes that's gonna be on the 21st it's one of these dates in october what do you what do you guys feel what, what's gonna happen you know it's traditional Monday night football. It's on ESPN. This is ESPN. Yes. It's been. It's yes. a traditional drop date. Now I watch American football. Yes. I'm a Patriots fan. I'll let you kind of have your any hate. Oh, like, wait, yep. Why? But okay, that's okay. On uh, the upside, I don't understand American football at all. So yeah. I'm just gonna sit and yeah, I, I know, yeah. Yeah, 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 totally. <laughs> so I'll be up watching. It's why I'm awake now. It's fine. This is why you're awake. Yeah. I'm watching the games. Yeah. Uh, but um, so every year I've actually watched a trailer, let the guys know it's up and kind of got them on, wake them up and go, yeah, here goes, here's a trailer. Right, right, right. The there's a trailer, privilege. there's a trailer. Exactly, right. yeah. Um, it's it's October, it's Monday Night Football, it's going to happen. It's just, watch which day it is, I reckon it'll be the yeah. 21st, not the 14th, although we just had Triple yeah. Force Friday, so it makes sense to be on the 14th. I think it's kind of title altogether is a nice week or so, okay. I guess. But right, right, right. Right. We'll see. So, so th- this this episode will drop on the sixteenth. So we could be right, or we could be totally wrong. And yeah. it's like, oh, there's a trailer, or no, guys, it's going to be next week. So, yeah. Um, yeah. I think yeah. one will be a trailer. One will be a ticket release. Is my own personal opinion on it. That oh, we might really? Fourteenth for trailer. Twenty first for no. The it'll be, it'll be the next day. It'll be it's, here's, it's a here's bang a bang. Yeah. No, it'll be, a bang, here's bang. the trailer. Here's your tickets tomorrow. Go out and get them. In which case, we'll go, George, yeah. sort everything out because you're, he's sorting <laughs> us out for our triple bill. Right, yeah. So either either the 14th, which is Lions Green Bay, or the 21st, which is your Patriots and the Jets. So we'll we'll see. It, it's got to be those two. The only reason I'm leading on the 21st, that is Carrie Fisher's birthday. Oh, nice. So, yeah, true. Yeah. So I think that to me, if they were, you know, and this is Carrie's last film, or it would be, it would be. I think it would be nice and a good fan service to be like, and to honor that, yeah. you know. So we'll we'll see. Maybe John Boyega's agents right. Who knows? But um, yeah, they, they're going to have to put a little buzz though. I would think they would say, you know, coming out Monday. Boom. That they'll so, do on probably Good Morning America or something like that. They always they yeah. usually do something like that. We we don't. For us, yeah. we don't get to watch. We have to try and find out surplus to when it's like we don't get the right the joy of that i yeah. i luckily for me being the nfl fan i am i have the game pass here in the uk which means i get the american yes. feed so i get your yes. i get your complete live feed including adverts so cool. when the trailer comes cool. on i get the actual trailer not just i go okay i know it's dropped because it's this point in the game it's yes. i actually yeah. can go right it's i can watch it live i mean yeah yeah to be fair that i watched your adverts and i do get yeah, you know, I do wonder why for some things, but it's a, that's <laughs> yeah. just a different culture thing entirely. But no, that's how I know when yeah. to be. Then I, as I wake the guys, yeah, right here it goes up. It's just go watch here. It. You go here. You go yeah. there. You go awesome. That's awesome. All right, no, that's it. For... Patriots game though, I'd love that as well. Just just, just put it up there. I was <laughs> like, this is just, I'm just all golden here. The Patriots and Star Wars trailer, bring it on. Bring it, bring it exactly. All right, let's move on to Katina chat. All right, Aaron and Heather are off, uh, but uh, we will we'll definitely have to catch back up with them next week. I'm going to start with you, Dave. What What's going on, Geeky? Anything Geeky this week with you? The main Geeky thing for myself this week has been yeah. Joker, to be totally honest oh, with you. Um, yes, Seeing okay. Joker is, was something, when the trailer dropped for that movie, was very much like, yes. a, this does nothing for me, trailer-wise. Right, right, right. And then I think I've seen a masterpiece Wow. I okay. Honestly, do I? I've never been as uncomfortable yet fully drawn into a movie in a long time. So okay. for my geek news, yes, yeah, certainly Joker is up there, and it seems to be it, the buzz about the film, an award season around the corner. Yeah. Although a lot of people yeah. feel that the subject matter might not be consistent with giving it awards for sure, the sure play that it has, and and certainly I, I get some of the understanding behind. Yeah, people saying things about mentalism. It very much does have its own yeah. say on that, and right. It, but I mean, he is a, he is a psycho, you know, psychopath that wants to kill a guy dressed in a bat suit. You know, he has some issues too. I so. just think it's I just, everyone. Yeah, the, everyone has some issues. Uh, he's just then the actual role of Phoenix is just incredible. I've not seen awesome. a performance like it. So that's yeah. been my certainly my geeky news this week. That uh, Joker yeah, is it cool. for me? Yeah. 
Yeah, I just, I mean, I haven't seen it yet, but then uh, I just saw somebody post something. There, there's a picture of him looking in the mirror and he's putting on his clown makeup and the way that the lights are and the way the frame of the reflection is, it looks like Batman's mask in the window. And it's like, when you look at it, you're like, dude, that is tight. <laughs> That's amazing. Oh, That's honestly, amazing. I, 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 honestly, I can't recommend it highly enough. I, I'm not saying yeah. you go... It's a weird. It's a masterpiece, but I, I don't think I'm in a hurry to see it again. Yeah. From the way it, it made me, right. it didn't leave me right. after I walked out of the movie theater. Told me, all right, that was okay. That was a good <laughs> yeah. film. This it stayed with me for at least like a good day. Where I was like, it yeah. didn't go out of my head. And I think that might be some people's take on it. Like, you know, maybe that shouldn't be in your head as much as it is. And I can see why well, some people are triggered by it. I, I think honestly, just like bigger picture. Uh, we're in a weird space with film anyways mm. if it's not a popcorn movie and that sells you know like you know again like uh, we talked about this earlier like solo oh and only made 300 something million <laughs> yeah, dollars that. it's a flop no i mean it's just like we're in a different space where you know some of these movies that are not popcorn movies don't get as much attention or like oh that's weird but i just think it's at a weird place we are in film or cinema mm. where uh we uh we just don't we're not seeing some of these kind of risky yeah. more unconventional m films that we would see in the past Definitely. you know so awesome that's great all right phil what what about you uh for me so i play um the star wars x-wing miniatures game uh, a lot. I play it competitively. As I was mentioned earlier, I play in a team. Yeah. Um, for me, I'm off to the Swedish National Championship in November. So it's the second week of November. I'm off to that. Um, uh -huh. So I'm gearing up for that. My friends are all gearing up for the World Championships. The World Championships are taking place uh, next weekend. So all the Star Wars games that Fantasy Flight Games put out. Yes. It's being held at their uh, headquarters in Minnesota. Um, okay. So uh, I think it's Roseville. Yeah, it's Roseville, Minnesota. So they they've got everyone coming down for the World Championships. So it's the 2019 okay. World Championships. I mean, I've been playing since uh, 2014. So for me, I've been playing. It came out in 2012. I'm playing since 2014. I've been playing it quite okay. a while. So it's something I I adore. And um, yeah, so it's something I've been doing for, for quite a while. I've been in this squadron for about two, three years now. Yeah, about yeah, three years. Okay. Um. So again, it's a great way I've met a lot of great people in the community, a lot of good friends. Um, That's awesome. I mean, I actually host, so uh, apart from One to the Force, um, yeah. so the Star Wars podcast I host, I also co-host a, uh, a Fox of the Firecast I do. It's a, a podcast for X-Wing, but it's for, we stream games. We stream games every other week. So we'll, cool. we'll take, uh, but we do it more like X-Wing TVs. We'll have guests on, so we have people that we know come on, so people who play a certain list the best um yeah we have come down in fact the uk from the uk we actually had the world champion the european champion and right kind of we it's quite a, um a big community here we have people come on yeah. and then we'll, we'll take audience submissions we'll take lists that they want to see play on screen so i'll play it or uh dom or nick my co-host one of them will play it so we kind of give people what they want to see and we'll kind of try new things out talk about what we want to do um so for me wow. it's just getting i've got that coming back up soon and then it's back onto the circuits kind of go, gear up for sweden so for me it's all all deep over next week so i've got they were 18 to 20 friends close friends of mine going out to minnesota to play in the world minnesota? championship so it's going to be wow. very pretty awesome are, are you going to uh sadly not i wish i was okay, um, okay. world championships is either invite or you have to play the last chance qualify out there i couldn't justify oh. the money to go that way to not play in the world championships yes. i'm going i want to play yes. the world champs i could easily qualify right. for the um, the world champs I can get the top 64 that's required no problem uh -huh. however um, uh, sorry my laptop's been a bit sooner. however no uh, I okay. can get a invite for next year in Sweden so after the oh. world champs next year all tickets are for next year so I can go out and earn it out there and I know yes. <sighs> easier field out there I guess from the caliber of player I play here that would be my yes. first chance for next year going forward that's yeah. what I want to do and I play so the list I play um, features Ketsuonio from Rebels in the Shadowcaster. I love that ship. Okay. It's my favorite player for three years straight now. It's my my baby ever since 1.0 into 2.0. I still love the ship. I play a Sarge right. Ventress, so she's my favorite character from the Clone Wars. So again, I can link it in there. Um, uh -huh. Again, I've got a Fang Fighter. That's kind of it's 
all Star Wars all the time, basically, for me. It's, um, <laughs> right, right, right. Between Once the, the Force, you... the Firecast, right. and then playing yes. tournaments, it's live, breathe, and die Star Wars. It's just, and, right, and right, right, yeah. The, the comics and everything else, it's just, yeah, this is my life. Yeah. And I'm not complaining, yeah. it's just, it's just literally, this is my life. No, there's yes. no better yeah. way to do it. I, I, oh, I hell found no. right. that to be real. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right, exactly, exactly. Wow, I mean, that's great. You, you, you're drinking the Kool Aid, man. <laughs> oh, I'm beyond that. <laughs> I'm going full deep. I'm a full company yeah, yeah. man. It's to just go full yeah, yeah. deep into it. You're like, I, I'm on two podcasts. I play <laughs> board games. Yep. Yeah, that's okay. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. okay. That's all right. I, that's well, all then right. also yeah, getting yeah. ready for cons as well. Getting Kanan better and better and doing cosplays and all the rest of it I mean, I, are are you part are you part of the rebel legion no, no? i'm not part of the rebel legion uh i've talked to okay. five first one to a clone outfit but that's gonna take it's just money and time for that one um yeah I mean, the very first yeah. cosplay i did was actually kylo ren just doing that based on the trailers for the force awakens this was in 2015 before the film came out oh cool um, so i've been cosplaying again for uh yeah. four-ish years now but again it's all uh, awesome. mainly Star Wars. Right? i do spider-man noir as well i've done that for many years as well again oh, wow. before into the spider verse came out because i loved him from the comics so again it's oh it, yeah. it's proper deep dice but yes so yes. through cosplay two podcasts and doing the <laughs> tournament it is proper full-on just yeah uh, all time. that's yeah. great that's I love great it. well i'm i i am part of the 501st so i'm a i'm a tk a stormtrooper so uh yeah i love it it's, for me, it's, great. it's, it's one great. day bring the money do a clone trooper that's the that's yeah the, that's the dream there you go. There you go. Dave, do you cosplay at all? I, I do not. No, I do not. I, I could really okay. do a really great fat Thor at the moment. So that would be <laughs> where it would be for me. <laughs> Just carry around a bag of a beer and some Cheetos and, uh, you know, generally right, right, look right. unkempt. I'd be really yes, good at that yes. role. But yeah, you're like, I, that, I no. can nail that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, we don't want to typecast. Oh, you say but, that, I mean, you, No, no, you it's fine. Have, you don't have the hair for it, though. You need this. That's what you need to do that. <laughs> That's plug in yeah. here. <laughs> and really mean to us without it. Um, yes, yes, exactly, exactly. Um, I mean, you could be Porkins too. I mean, there's 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 room there, right? Seems like fat shaming on the channel here, dude. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, Can't man. quite get over that. I know. But no, we that'd be should awesome. not do uh, that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> No. Now, do you guys do the con? I mean, you mentioned cons. Do you guys do cons? You guys? Yeah, yeah, I do quite go, a lot. Okay, I, mean, I yeah. go to yeah. London Film and Comic Con. I've been to MCM. I've been to mainly London based, but then guns and some north yeah. to Wales Con in December. So I do travel around yeah. the country as well, but not as best as far as I can afford. <laughs> yes, <laughs> of course, oh, they're, of course, yeah. They're of course. certainly not yeah. as big here. Where the really the venue size, I think, is one thing. Where it's yes. one convention hall that is given to it. So it's yeah. not on as big a scale, but yeah, we have sort of Manchester, Glasgow, up in Scotland have it. London have a really big one where we went to celebration. Yeah. So yeah, right. it's, it's nice to get that. I'm in Manchester for myself is probably the closest because at the yeah. same at the top end of the country. So it, well, right way down. Right. <laughs> technical. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's technical. It's, it's, it's yeah, tough yeah, to get yeah. to them sometimes when they're not right. around your hometown. But you know, that's that's it's a train ride away a lot of the time. But it's it's great right. to get to these events. I mean, Dave is yeah. seven and a half hours north of me. So wow, yeah. That's crazy. That's crazy. But hey, you know, we love Star Wars. That's exactly so, it. Sir. Right. Yeah, that's it. That's it. That's it. That's cool. Uh, yeah, for me, not too much going on this week. Uh, I just we just watched Solo before this recording. So nice. finish Solo uh, again. Like my son, I have I have three kids, but two of them are really small and uh, they love they love you know, they like Solo and they like, you know, they like the new movies and they're not like totally critical of them. So they just, you know, Solo is a great little flick and it's kind of easy to understand. Yeah. So we, we, we finished that um, playing a little Battlefront 2. There's a new update. So me and my son Trent were playing that for a little bit. So uh, definitely enjoying that. But I mean, obviously, this is kind of geeky. We're across the country across the big pond here um and uh i think this is pretty geeky and i am so glad you guys came out oh, it's so, been an absolute pleasure yeah. so absolute yeah, pleasure. indeed yeah 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 so um i i think i think we're we're about ready to wrap it up here guys so thanks again for listening to another episode of wstr galactic public access once again you can check us out on the social media all one word wstr media we want to hear from you you can comment Read, rate us on Apple Podcasts. Email us at mailbox at wstrmedia.com. You can leave us a voicemail at 
WSTR. That's 630-557-9787. Once again, you can catch our back catalog of episodes at podcast.wstrmedia.com. And we got merchstore.wstrmedia.com. Okay, guys, uh, where can people find you on the old internet? Phil, Dave, how about Phil, you? Phil, you do such a good outro to our, our yeah. shows oh. usually that cover this all. So, <laughs> Phil, you take it away because I will forget something. I was very <laughs> yeah. much expecting this to happen. So, yes, you can find <laughs> yeah. us on YouTube, iTunes, Spotify, SoundCloud. No, it's not SoundCloud anymore, is it? That's how tired I am. So, YouTube is where we can also have our videos. We have it on iTunes, Sound, uh, iTunes Spotify, Podbean, and Stitcher. Uh, you can find yeah. us at the, for, uh, at the Ones of the Force of Stars podcast on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, or at the Force Podcast. Uh, we do have our own merchandise as well at Teespring. It's in the link in our Facebook and Twitter, and also on our uh, YouTube videos as well. Awesome. See, it just rolled off your tongue. <laughs> You it's, kind of messed it, it up, to be honest, Phil. I gave you it that you were do an amazing right. job and you, then ruined it. To, to, for those yeah. of you who are listening or watching back later on, it's nearly yeah. four o'clock in the morning here. <laughs> yeah. I mean, come on. Uh, my coffee's <laughs> run out. I'm tired. Right, right. I went to the pub. Right, I've been right. up since <laughs> eight four, like, yesterday morning. I had a tournament. Yeah, yeah. Then I had to go out. Then I had to come back. I'm doing this. I've had a long ass day, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Forgive me for not getting you're... everything done completely <laughs> spot on the first time round. It's all right. It's Phil. I'm not angry. I'm just really disappointed. I know you. Um, are. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! Why don't you tell our listeners uh, real quick, like, what's the ele- elevator pitch for your guys' podcast for once with? Well, the since I mucked up the outro, Dave, you might yes. take this away. Dave, Dave, let, uh, let's take this away. Uh, our man. podcast is. Very much a news podcast. We will cover all the latest stories that are coming yes. out of the galaxy far, far away. Yeah. We are starting to branch out. We do have now a Resistance show. So after each episode okay. of Resistance, Phil and I do a sh- an hour show about that episode, sure. talking through that. And we right. also have our new list shows that are now every other Sunday as well. So we are branching out to get more episodes, cool. film commentaries, things like that we are doing more of as well. But we yeah, our regular yet. show every other Wednesday, you can catch that yeah. on all the places Phil almost told you. Indeed. <laughs> yeah, you also don't we do have so we do have uh, two film commentaries at the moment. We do have episode one, The Phantom Menace, and Rogue One, uh-huh. uh, Star Wars Stories. We have commentaries for both of those. Um because okay. Rogue One comes with no commentary, so why not listen to our total tones as you watch the film? Um So you just you just hit play and then your beautiful voices come out. Yeah, and it's, it's, it's like having yeah, the Imperials yeah. themselves tell you. Yeah, if you watch the video <laughs> right. from the beginning, I tell you how to sync it up, when to sync it up, when to hit play and how to line wow. it up. So it's yeah, it's, it's like it's like Dark Side of the Moon, right? Oh, it's completely <laughs> done. Um, it matches up work. It's it's perfect. Oh, it's beautiful. If you play it backwards, uh, no, no. It's, uh... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, right, right, right. We will be, of course, doing something for the Mandalorian. We're not quite sure how we'll manage it just quite yeah. yet. Yeah, I know. Oh. Yeah, if you, I, I listened to your guys' last pod. So basically, right now, Disney Plus hasn't been released for the UK yet. That's that's Every the deal. Every next year. Oh, we know. Really? We know, right? Yeah. And trust oh, me, we've tried market. ways and just... means of getting there, but Disney are very crafty and not letting anybody outside their country see what they want to. It's a wretched oh, hive of scum and villainy. That is it. so true. Yeah. Hey, where, the, where there's a will, there's a way. Oh, yes. so, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's it, so. It is officially announced for February. Well, well twenty twenty is still what they're Q1, saying. Q one, but with Clone Wars coming back in February next year, we're we are yeah. banking on it being that release will be the headline for the uk slash european market but we are oh surprised gosh. that the uk at least is not getting it for november yeah so yeah we're very seems upset so about weird. <laughs> we are very weird i would be i i mean i'm so excited for the mandalorian like i'm more excited for that than don't want to talk about it rise... i know i'm sorry <laughs> sorry i'm rubbing it in you know? <laughs> i'm rubbing it in uh, I'll just, you know, we'll legally figure it out. Oh, but that's absolutely. So weird. Always the best way. That's so weird. Yeah. It's yeah. crazy. Wow. That is crazy. Especially, I mean, it's such a, I mean, it's a big market in itself, you know? It, and we just talked about this. You know where Star Wars came from. Exactly. You know? And yeah. it's just, it, we've talked about this now, show, but it seems like it opens it yeah. up. And if you're not going to give it to all the major territories at once, it opens it up to piracy which i wouldn't have yeah. thought they would have wanted where i'm right. very very happy to pay for this service yeah legally when yes. it's available yeah yeah but i also i love Star Wars, I, but i run a podcast that i do want to talk about yeah. these things and I mean, it's, us, I, well it, i said on our com- show it makes us irrelevant if we talk about it next year yes. it makes us completely irrelevant 
Right, exactly. It's like it's like anything else that's pop culture in mm. a sense. Like you know when you know Game of Thrones is buzzing and like every episode, every week, everyone's talking about it. It's like, oh, sorry guys, you know we know Mandalorians hot, but you can't listen to our show because we can't talk about it even for five minutes because we don't know we haven't seen it. Yeah, you exactly. Know? It just, exactly. Yeah, it it makes it that's sad. I'm like, ugh. But well, we will talk about it as it releases yeah. by some means. <laughs> if I have to have someone in a country with it stand in front of TV with a camera uh, and send the clips to me in little two-minute right, bits, right. I'm doing it. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Yeah, well, the, again, hopefully maybe they'll they'll get, you know, well, you just keep on writing Bob Iger, be like, hey, listen, we got to get Mandalorian. <laughs> <laughs> I need this figured out before, because uh, as of this recording, Gentlemen, it is 30 days away till Mandalorian. Yeah. Oh, it's going to be yeah. so good. It's going to yeah, be so, it's, it's, so good. Yeah, so I, I was able to go, obviously, at Star Wars Chicago, Celebration Chicago. I was there at the panel and got to see, uh, obviously, it's on YouTube, too. But before, they, they cut the stream and they basically said, here's a little clip. And, you know, they showed like a five-minute clip of an actual episode. Yeah. And I'm just like... What am I seeing? What this is amazing, <laughs> and I need this in my life now. So ever since yeah. that we, panel, first, we actually I was had like, George out there uh, for Star Wars oh. Chicago. So he was actually we were doing live videos. He was jumping in from Chicago to our live video, so we could actually to talk about it at the same time. And I was actually at the UK System Open, so the the world's biggest X Wing tournament is here in the UK. It's six hundred plus people. So I, wow. the, I was playing that during the day in the evening. I was having to do the live streams for us breaking everything down <laughs> and it was i was ill afterwards obviously because i was just so worn down but yeah, yeah we're george jumping in from from chicago me from the system over yeah. and it was just kind of yeah we managed to break it all down but as our roaming reporter he was going to come out for celebration next year but that's now a no go. So we lost our roaming reporter which is sad <laughs> so i i'm sensing a pattern like you don't sleep much phil it's just like not tonight <laughs> yeah, uh... that, not tonight right uh, at least no, dave gotta take got a little nap you know in three hours <laughs> it's all okay, good it's all well, worth it for star wars it yeah, really is that's right yeah that's right, obviously that's right. the bucks panthers game up at uh, tottenham but oh yeah yeah i mean yeah. i i did go to boston last year to see the patriots at home and that was incredible but oh cool yeah, awesome. I, that, awesome i mean i said i'm not a fan of the fan i've been a fan for many years um i remember the helmet yes, catch yeah. i remember the sideline catch yeah I, <sighs> In fact, it's funny. So, Tia Sakar did a bit for NFL films. Um, she does the voice of Sabine. My cat is named Sabine after the character. Love it. Uh, of dearly. Course. And she put a little bit. Yeah. She was, she's a Giants fan. And she was talking about Super Bowl uh -huh. 42. And I put on her Instagram so that so, love, love Sabine. Love it, Sabine. My cat is named after it. However, as a Patriots fan, I can't condone this. Because she likes it. I'm like, it's just, I can't. Just, I don't know if people <laughs> can't do it. happy or just annoyed at this point that she's acknowledged that this is just like just gonna yeah. rub salt into the wound here. I was like, I, that's right, that's right. I can't even. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. That's awesome. I mean, that's that's true sports fans. That yeah. that's what it is. You know, I I I like you, uh, but I can't. Well, you yeah, know, again, so like I, I'm I, a Bears fan. I'm a Bears fan, so anybody. Bears fan. So we were at, oh, we were at the game. And, I love your mom. Yeah, we, were, we, were, we were at the game last week um, for the Bears Raiders game in London. Oh, cool! Yes, awesome. Well, you yeah, say not, not, not the outcome. Sorry, not the outcome. No, I mean, what was he doing yeah. throwing that? Oh, it, it was a game. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. No. We, we we have to end this podcast i can't yeah. talk about you know but but it's like it's very similar to um you know anyone that's a packers fan i'm like what are you doing i can't even look at you i'm not even sure we could be on the same thing but oh, it's I, all I, good I'm it's all a good. packers jets or dolphins fan i'm laughing i'm fine yeah yeah exactly <laughs> exactly <laughs> Well, gentlemen, uh, again, I really appreciate you guys coming on. Phil for not sleeping. Dave getting up and taking a nap and coming on the show. We guys really appreciate you guys coming on. So, no uh, on yes, yeah. I mean, uh, there's a there's a line uh, from the Beastie Boys that says, "I'm intercontinental because I eat French toast." Um, How will JJ work so that into episode yes. nine? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he will. I'm sure he will. But I think I feel like I'm intercontinental because I just had a podcast with two yeah. fine gentlemen from the UK. So been been a really um, good, really good podcast. Yeah, I enjoyed this. Yeah. 
Yes, thank you so much. So uh, ne- next week, episode 145, the, the, it won't stop, but uh, we might have so- it might have something to do with Tatooine. Every time we tease everything, sometimes you know these scheduling, scheduling things happen, but I'm going to just say episode 145 might have something to do with Tatooine. So uh, I, since I'm solo this time, guys, you got to help me out with this outro, but every time we do this, uh, we, we, we do it, this is how we close. So if I, I'm hoping you guys can help me out. Is that okay? Absolutely. Go go All show. right. All right, here we go. Uh, now this, this, this is, is podcasting. podcasting. There we go. Terrible. We probably ruined it. I do apologize. As British people would often do. <laughs> that's okay. That's okay. Thanks, guys. Really appreciate it. Thanks, man. Cheers. Cheers.